our beloved friend J.B. John Bertucci, otherwise known according to our friend Cecile as the Bertucci. <laughs> <laughs> and John and uh, Dina Brooke are the co-founders of uh, the Fukushima um, Response Campaign or the Fukushima Response Network on Facebook. And uh, he's going to tell you what's going on in the grassroots citizen uh, radiation monitoring universe. Thank you all. Thank you all for being here. Most of you must know how bad it is. Harvey skimmed across it. Uh, it's, there's a lot of levels to what's going on. At, uh, there's a lot of levels to what's going on in Fukushima. Uh, I got my uh, training on Fukushima in the summer prior, 2010, when BP totally made a mess of the Gulf and totally uh, irresponsibly made it worse to cover their bottom line. Uh, that's the game plan. The corporations are a virus. They're not going to take care of this. What happened in Fukushima is existential. Um, we have, it's a turning point. Um, my personal uh, approach is uh, perception. Uh, understanding. Uh, why are we here? <laughs> Start with that big question. Um, Einstein said that um, space and time are poetic concepts. They're not the conditions in which we live. Uh, Fukushima is going to force us to confront those, those conditions. Uh, subatomic particles operate in a time frame that we have no conception of. Mm -hmm. uh, if you saw those beautiful images of uh, splitting atoms that would spiral off in a millisecond, well, we're in one of those spirals, but for us, it's going to take 30 years to get to the next curve. But the curve is launched. How far are we going to be able to go with that? How are we going to be able to, to cope? We are the ones who were alive when this happened. It had, it had a whole history of getting to this point, but at this point, um, we've ripped the fabric of reality, and we've let in an invisible guest. This invisible guest does not operate on the same terms we live in. It's not friendly to our life form. So how do we, as individuals, with children, with bills, how do we come to terms with this? Um, it's an invisible monster. Um, we're in Sonoma County. Uh, we got together. Well, actually, it took some time. Uh, from hearing Harvey cry, watching the, the that explosion, the, the many explosions, but Unit 3 was the one that nailed it for me. This was a, a turning point. I kind of slept walked through the rest of that year. I got to Christmas and I was going quietly crazy. Um, I think it was January 1st or January 2nd, I saw a, a blog done by a friend who's become a friend, Nick Babbitt. Uh, he had, uh, he had, a, he had he had mastered, or he had brought his heart into the problem, and he was, he, he wasn't ranting or venting, but he was engaging that depth of despair and understanding that if they have to abandon the plant, it's going to get worse. The different kind of levels, I mean, nobody believed it was a cold shutdown. So in early 2012, I started to get a sense of how I could um, get my hands on this. And then we had, we had Occupy, that kind of gave me a grassroots training on how to mobilize in a community. And then we had a senator from Oregon who went to Fukushima, Senator Ron White. And he came back shaken to the core, yeah. pun intended. Uh, he immediately had a press conference. He was pushing for an international response. A no-brainer, but here is almost a year later, and here's somebody important saying that. And it sort of coalesced that yes, maybe if we got behind him and we built some pressure for an international response, people will start seeing what I can see. I mean, it's the Cassandra curse, to be able to see it and nobody believes you. Mm -hmm. um, so we had Senator Ron Wyden, we had Yastel Yamada coming. We formed a group in Sonoma County. We called it Fukushima Response. We created a website. We started meeting. We were meeting every week. Uh, we started doing informational events. We hosted Yastel Yamada, uh, Chieko Shina. Uh, Dan came and gave a, a lecture on uh, monitoring devices. And we started building um, an informational bureau that would try to spread the word so that people could start to 
approach this problem because there are so many denial mechanisms that are quite legitimate. What can we as individuals do? Well, we started working together and we started working on an informational level. Um, we were the ones that organized the uh, human mural on the beach uh, last mm -hmm. year. Yeah. Fukushima is here. Yay. Yay. It was a process. You know, it took us almost, almost two months to come up with what words we were going to put on the beach. Mm -hmm. um, and then we, um, we've been meeting regularly. We still meet. Our next meeting is Thursday, this coming Thursday in Petaluma, if any of you are free to come. Um, at a certain point, however, we could see that that international response wasn't going to happen. Uh, Senator Ron Wyden got quiet, and now he's pushing uh, small modular reactors in Oregon. Yastel oh. 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 has passed away, he had throat cancer. Um, so I, I think the curve there is, I, I'd love to think that we are winning, and there is a turning point, a tipping point in perception and consciousness of the magical world we in, the delicate ecosphere that we are part of, but we have to start thinking in different terms. If there's an invisible entity that's going to be in this room in greater and greater dimensions, but can we play with that shift in perception? Can you, can you see your great-grandchildren sitting in the chair next to you? We have to start operating on a larger time frame than our own little lives. And so we're working together with people who, who spread the word, who help other people find the words to use to, to approach this problem, and we are developing a, a very strong network for monitoring citizen science. Um, Gina, Linda, Michael, uh, and we're so blessed to have Dan so close, because Dan uh, has been doing this for decades. So we've got a system now where we're working with people in the Northwest, Mimi German in Portland, there's a network in Seattle, um, Tennessee, uh, people are beginning to get Geiger counters, beginning to learn how to use them, and beginning to uh, set the baseline. Uh, I started doing it last year, and on my average baseline uh, reading was 25 counts per minute. A count per minute is a nuclear disintegration in front of the device. Very random, but you can get a sense. It's up to 34, 35 now, so that's a year. It is rising. What's the natural background before? Very difficult question. I don't think they tested before Hiroshima. Uh, I, I think you probably think it figures on cancer, which might be an indicator of uh, what this um, this uh, material can do to the, the DNA. Uh, probably before Hiroshima, there was what one in five cancers, <laughs> or one in a hundred cancers. Yeah. Right now, it's probably one in a five. One in two. What, one in two. One in okay. two. One in two. Okay, so connecting the dots takes a certain amount of perception. You have to see things outside of this. I've got to get the paycheck for this week. I've got to pay this. I've got to do this. You've got to start thinking globally and uh, in a different time frame. I, I don't want to go on and on because I could on this dimension. That's the one that touches my heart. We're working in messaging. One ocean, one heart. Fukushima is here. And we're working on... Uh, teaching other people how to use the devices that can, that can uh, see the invisible.